What we know as hell is populated by a variety of demons, but few have managed to maintain a high-profile presence in the modern world. Once revered as a god, this member of hell's unroyal family has survived, adapted, and evolved, morphing over time and custom to remain one of the most feared and reviled demons of the Abrahamic faiths. Today on Scream to Scream, we sift through the sands of time to unearth the story of Beelzebub, an ancient demon whose reputation is surpassed only by Satan himself. Before we plunge into the abyss, make sure you subscribe to Graveyard Shift and let us know in the comments which true life horror stories you'd like us to cover in the future. Now, behold, the demon who was once a god. The Philistines, known for their biblical conflict with the Israelites, worshipped Beelzebub as a deity. Philistine records of this are largely lost to history, and the deity we now know as Beelzebub, like a number of other pagan gods, was absorbed into the Christian faith, but in a less than flattering way. Commonly associated with the Canaanite fertility god Baal, Baalzebub, as he was called by the followers of Christ, was recast in the role of a false god. The fast-growing religion would not tolerate any god other than what they considered the one true god. Opinions differ on the meaning of the name Baalzebub, which translates roughly to Lord who flies, but more literally, Lord of the flies, which has stuck. We can only speculate whether this was an attempt to diminish the once powerful deity in the eyes of the people. Baalzebub was further smeared by stories that his cult would worship in foul ways, feasting on excrement as their demonic godhead would expel flies and disease upon them. Perhaps there was an agenda against this once popular god, one that would result in a great fall indeed. With an all-out assault on his character, Beelzebub found his story retold and reframed in apocryphal understandings as well as in religious texts directed at his once faithful followers. Appearing as Beelzebul in the Testament of Solomon, Beelzebub is portrayed as a demon prince, a fallen angel, synonymous with Lucifer. This version derives power and glee from exciting the carnal lust of the priesthood and causing destruction through tyrants on earth. Beelzebub later found his way into the pages of the New Testament, again referred to as Beelzebul, notably in Matthew, where he is spoken of on the same level as Satan. Beelzebub's role as a demon was further defined by occultist Johann Weyer in the 16th century. Beelzebub appears again a hundred years later in the writings of exorcist Sebastian Michaelis, and perhaps most importantly, Beelzebub found a key role in John Milton's Paradise Lost. Here, in the eyes of the Christian Church, alongside Lucifer and Astaroth, Beelzebub would round out the unholy trinity. Milton wrote of Beelzebub, quote, Than whom Satan except none higher sat. As a crown prince of hell, Beelzebub became associated with the deadly sins of pride and gluttony. In short order, after his coronation, exorcists would often point to this demon, in particular, as the one responsible for the torments suffered by those possessed. While he had become something less than a god, Beelzebub retained great power and notoriety. He would not be forgotten as so many ancient deities had. Beelzebub was here to stay. Beelzebub made an appearance in the mortal realm in the mid-16th century. A young French woman named Nicola Aubrey was beset by more than 30 possessing demons, chief among them the Lord of the Flies himself. After months of battle, Beelzebub, now referring to himself as the Prince of the Huguenots, finally left the girl, but only at the request of none less than the Bishop of Léon himself. Beelzebub amassed a frightful reputation among Christians. His prominence in the ranks of hell came to rival that of Satan to such an extent that their names became somewhat interchangeable. Beelzebub became the focus of paranoia for many during those Puritan times. He was even named specifically as the cause of the Salem witch trials, during which 14 women and 5 men were accused of being corrupted by the High Prince himself. Centuries later, Beelzebub is blamed as the demonic force responsible for the possession of Anne Elizabeth Annalise Michelle, whose story would become the inspiration for the 2005 film The Exorcism of Emily Rose. In the early 1970s, Annalise was a studious, devoutly Christian girl growing up in Germany. After a school prank with a Ouija board, she fell victim to a series of traumatic seizures and hallucinations. When pharmacological treatment seemed to have no lasting effect, the Catholic Church was called in. It was soon determined that Beelzebub was behind the poor girl's plight. 
What resulted from her possession and subsequent exorcism can only be characterized as disastrous and a heartbreaking display of what the demon and human beings are capable of. In addition to his role in the exorcism of Emily Rose, Beelzebub has attained a level of interest and awareness among the public that keeps him showing up with some regularity. Perhaps it's the compelling nature of his name. Maybe it's because he's frequently represented as a giant fly-like creature, with some versions of the hellish beast taking it to another level of grotesque. Descriptions often include a bloated face and belly, bat wings covered in oily scales or matted fur. No matter what the physical description of Beelzebub, he seems to be here to stay. Today, many people worship at the altar of pop culture, idolizing celebrities and athletes rather than deities and demigods. Perhaps Beelzebub is aware of this changing reverence and has morphed again into the realm of media. He's appeared in everything from classic films like 1967's Dr. Faustus starring Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor to under-the-radar short horror films like 2014's The Waffle House Incident. Beelzebub continues to pop up and terrify audiences in a way few other demons can claim. The Lord of the Flies' grip on media attention even found a home in Japan in the appropriately named Beelzebub, a 2011 anime based on the manga series of the same name. Originally published in Shonen Jump magazine, both the manga and anime focus on troubled student Tatsumi Oga. Baby Beel, the earth-born child of you-know-who, is discovered by Oga floating down a river. The two end up intertwined in a series of misadventures in which the fate of the world may be at stake. The next stop on the Hell's Prince World Tour would be Central America in the 2017 Mexican horror film Belzebuth, which, while spelled differently, is clearly a reference to our ever-popular demon. This was certainly not the first time he's had a bit of a name change for the sake of art. Beelzebub has even made a name for himself in Bollywood, central to the cult Hindi horror films Beelzebub 1 and Beelzebub 2, proving that his power requires no faith system other than celebrity. In 2018, Beelzebub returned to American horror cinema as the central antagonist in Soul to Keep, this time manifesting as a possessing demon with a hunger for souls. When a group of partying teens dabble in the occult, they fail to summon the Dark Lord. Unluckily for them, their more esoterically inclined friend manages success when she explores the ritual on her own time. This iteration of Beelzebub is driven to bring the kingdom of hell to earth by whatever means necessary. Through these film outings, we're seeing that perhaps he's found the means already by way of entertainment. Perhaps most notably, Beelzebub appears in the iconic classic rock song Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Singer Freddie Mercury belts out that Beelzebub has a devil put aside for me, leading one to wonder as to the actual meaning of the reference. This paired with the refrain Bishmila, which roughly translates to in the name of God, leads one to further understand that Mercury is begging his maker to set him free and not deliver him to hell for his sins. While the sins indicated in the song may center on killing a man, we understand today that his real-life concerns were of another nature. It's likely that the charismatic frontman was a victim of the oppressive views of homosexuality that were prevalent in that era and feared punishment by the right hand of Satan. Beelzebub continues to enchant musicians of all stripes and is a favorite character for metal and alternative bands to bring up in lyrics, notably in songs by God Dethroned, Islander, Cancer Bats, Necromantics, and Black Pistol Fire. Satirical punk rock band The Dead Milkmen even named a record after Hell's Prince with their 1998 offering, Beelzebubba. Even the famed musical comedy duo of Jack Black and Kyle Gass, Tenacious D, couldn't resist the urge to name drop the demon in Beelzebos from their 2006 film The Pick of Destiny. Beelzebub seems dead set on commanding all forms of media, including streaming television, appearing on the Neil Gaiman, Terry Pratchett penned book, now television series, Good Omens. Portrayed by Anna Maxwell Martin, the demon is described as about 6,000 years old, but immortal. When fans asked about the motivation for what they felt was a gender swapping of the character, Gaiman responded by saying, The Lord of the Flies is canonically gender neutral, and that their pronouns would be zur. Of course, the demon has long enjoyed his place in other literature as well, even outside of holy books, occult texts, and demonology manuals. Most notably, in the 1954 novel Lord of the Flies by Nobel Prize winning British author William Golding. The narrative centers on an island of castaway children left to fend for themselves, surviving free of adults in the social structure of the civilized world. 
As the children become filthy, desperate, and at times morally corrupt by their circumstance, Golding writes that they are becoming as Beelzebub would have them. In the story, the boys hunt and kill a wild boar, leaving its head on a stake. As decay and decomposition set in on the boar's head, the boys dub it the Lord of the Flies, both because of the insects that it has attracted, as well as from their knowledge of the demon of their Christian faith, now a fading memory of the lives they've left behind. Beelzebub lives on today in the Church of Entertainment, no small feat for an ancient god whose reputation was smeared by an upstart religion and damned to the lake of fire. Demons truly are legion. One can find complex lists of the hierarchies of hell, and yet Beelzebub remains in the paradigm while others have faded into obscurity. From his bright early years as a pagan fertility god, to his career as a ringleader of demonic possession, to his modern iteration as one part boogeyman, one part rock god, this prince of hell has lifted himself above all the others. Surely his appearance has played a role, but in a rogues gallery that includes a number of frightful monsters, appearances can't be given all the credit. Is it that he has come to represent the deadly sins that even the most morally upright struggle with? Surely even members of the clergy have prideful moments, or gluttonous moments, or moments of sexual deviance. Or is it that there's something greater at play here, a force unseen to us? Is Beelzebub working behind the scenes, driving tyrants to sow the seeds of discord while hiding in plain sight, in our movies, the shows we watch, and the music we enjoy? Satan has been described as the great deceiver, and yet Beelzebub sure seems to be giving old Lucifer a run for his money without hiding a thing. So what do you think? Is Beelzebub a foul and evil demon from hell? Or is he an ancient fertility god making the best of a raw deal? What is it that has allowed him to stay in our imagination since before biblical times? And where do you think he'll pop up next? Please be sure to like and subscribe to Graveyard Shift. Leave a comment if you're brave enough. And as always, check back next time to find out what else we'll make it from Scream to Screen. <laughs>